Hey, welcome to Square Body Stuff. I'm Chad, and we're gonna do another walk around video today. And before we get into the video, it's it is a little windy out, so you might have a little wind noise. Uh, we've got some snow on the ground; it's trying to melt off. It's actually a pretty nice day out. The temperature's coming up. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. I appreciate that. Uh, hit the like button. Hit that notification bell. That way you'll get notifications when I put new videos out. Also, go down, go down in that description box below and check out my Teespring link. Uh, that's where all my merchandise is. You can check out uh, my shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs. Um, I got quite a few things there. A lot of designs I've done myself. So I'd appreciate it if you go check that out. Maybe pick something up. Today we're going to do a walk around on pretty much my daily driver truck. Old Crane Puff. If you've been around the channel a while, you'll, you'll recognize this truck. I've done a few videos on him. I've had him for a couple years. Uh, what we'll do is I'll get him started up. It won't be a, a true cold start. I drove him home this morning. He's been sitting for maybe a couple hours. and It's about uh, 35 degrees out, so it won't be a true cold start, but I'll get him started up. We'll back, back him out into the drive to where I've got a little more room to walk around him, and I'll just give you a little rundown on how, uh, how I acquired him and what I've done to him and my plans for maybe the future of him. Like I said, it won't be a true cold start. He was drove this morning a couple hours ago. Uh, temp gauge goes almost all the way down. The seatbelt buzzer still works, kind of cool. All the gauges still work in him. I've got a, a Super Pro Tac, kind of a new old. It was a new old stock I bought off of eBay. It's kind of period correct. We'll see if we can get him to start up. I'm going to give him one pump. Usually when he's cold, cold, I just give him about two or three pumps on the throttle and get that choke set. It's got electric choke on it, and it usually fires right up. Yeah, he's still warm enough. He didn't even go to high idle. I'm assuming it's at least rolled over at least once probably twice I'm not real sure this truck's had some miles on it you can tell by the dash that it's it's got some age it wasn't wasn't a garage kept vehicle by any means Just a little brief history of what I know about the old cream puff is uh, I got him a couple years ago. I done some trading with an old boy. I traded uh, a 79 K5 Blazer and a 79 K10 long bed uh, for this truck and my other truck. I call Squeaky my little step side. Uh, kind of we done a two for two straight across, no money changed hands. It was just title for title, kind of a cool deal. I've got some pictures of the other trucks. I think I may have a little bit of video of the uh, of the K10 long bed. I called him Red Rocket. Kind of wish I still had that truck back. He was in about the same shape as Cream Puff here. Uh, pretty crusty and rusty around the edges, but nice solid drive train. Uh, good driving truck. So, but I'll I think I've got a walk around video of it when I first started this channel. You can go look for it, or I'll if if I can find it, or I'll put a link up here in the corner for. For that video if you want to go check it out uh so we done traded trade it straight across the blazer i had didn't have an engine in it so we trailered it up there it was about a two two and a half hour drive if i remember right uh my son my oldest son clayton drove red rocket up there followed us up there and then drove this truck uh back for us while we trailered the step side because it didn't run very good so it was it was kind of a fair deal uh we were both happy with the deal I've done quite a bit to the truck since I've had it. It doesn't, you know, nothing really cosmetic other than the grill. I did change the grill and the front end. 
or the grill and the front bumper. I put the, a bumper with the bumperettes, which was off. Actually, that bumper is off of this blazer. Now, that was the original bumper off of Big Nasty. Uh, and this grill, it may have actually been the original grill out of Big Nasty also. I can't remember for sure where I come up with this grill, but it had a stainless steel tube grill in it. I don't really care much for those. Uh, it's all original paint, except for this red red barn paint, which I tried to get rid of some of it, but apparently whoever was painting this truck uh, on the production line, either they had a shortage of this Santa Fe tan paint, or he just didn't feel like putting a bunch of paint on there, because this paint is, is super, super thin. And then again, it may have just been from, uh, you know, being 42 years, almost 43 years old. I've done a little bit of buffing on it when I first got it on this door, just kind of playing around. Trying to preserve it a little bit. It does have dual tanks. Both of them work. I think I stated, it showed before, you know, the wheels and tire combo. I found these down in Little Rock, Arkansas. It was an eight hour round trip just to get the wheels. And it was probably, you know, it was a long ways to go, but I really wanted these wheels. Now the center caps are factory rally center caps and I the bolts they're bolted to the wheel I drilled and tapped the wheels to accept those center caps and also you can tell I've trimmed around the caps so they'll actually fit in there I like the looks of them the the original center caps for these bullets they either had a flat a flat cap to go over the center or well, they also had something that was similar to this style that went out, went popped in there. The best I could tell, it's all original sheet metal. Some of the trim's missing. Uh, dual two and a half inch exhaust. I have a video on the mufflers that I'm running on this. They're just 18 inch glass packs. In that video, it was a muffler shootout comparison between uh, some standard turbo mufflers, Flowmasters, and these glass packs but at that time the exhaust stopped right behind the rear axle since then i've added it all the way out the back so it's a little quieter in the cab now well, that's pretty much what it is on the outside it had some damage on this pasture side i kind of straightened out a little bit that fender was caved in pretty bad when i got him but i straightened it out but as you can tell he's he's got some rust uh, but I'm just gonna kind of keep him the way he is for now. Just try to preserve it um, Maybe eventually I'll rebuild him. Some people don't quite understand that but I'm, I'm a little bit different got a floor mat in the back because there's some holes in the floor So it does have a rubber mat Moving to the inside of course. It's a Cheyenne, which is kind of a mid-level trim package uh, above the Scottsdale and below the Silverado so you still got your bright aluminum trim uh, your trim on the outside was standard with the Cheyenne uh, the steering wheel the upgraded steering wheel uh, I don't remember the RPO code for that there's RPO codes for about everything uh, they don't know them off the top of my head but it had the headliner which is sagging I actually did a video when I first got this truck and starting YouTube channel of redoing the headliner re-gluing this but it didn't last long uh, i actually even got a video of redoing the seat cover this is a, a vintage type seat cover i found on amazon because the vinyl seat the original vinyl seat's pretty rough shape kind of just patched it up and put a cover on it uh, vintage it was a new old stock steering wheel cover the box in it of it was i mean it was straight out of the 80s or 90s it was pretty cool when i got the box it was it was looked like the same boxes of steering wheel covers whenever i was a kid there's the dual tank switch like i said earlier they do both work it's got the spid sheet in the glove box it goes over everything it came with it has a well, not a lot of extras it was actually originally a five liter 305 uh, let's see, had the floor mats. Originally had sliding rear window. I changed it to a solid back glass and tinted it. Uh, inside hood release. Cheyenne package, Santa Fe tan. Had rally wheels. I still got the original wheels. 
got the owner's manual for the AM FM 8 track Pioneer and it's got a couple speakers in the door I think they're uh, Roxford Fosgate or some old Memphis they're they're vintage too and it still works eight track player doesn't doesn't work all the time I do have a couple eight tracks that I pop in there if it decides to work still got the original owner's manual okay here's another cool thing that I've got with this truck uh, when I was had the seat out to do the seat cover I found the original build sheet uh, this sheet is for my my step side so disregard that a uh, couple things this truck had that was a little bit odd to me uh, and I gather that it was probably special ordered either for a customer or the dealer ordered it special because for one axle ratio had 276 axle ratio uh, that's the HC2 via our RPO code. The 276 axle ratio that would be a, an option. The standard ratio should have been 308. Uh, which it says GQ1 for standard ratio. But below it, it has the, uh, it calls this out. So while this sheet was going down the production line with this truck, they would have known to switch it out to 276 axle ratio. And you can see here is also ordered with the JB1 manual brakes. Uh, it was originally uh, delivered to Hill Motor Company in Streeter, Illinois. And some of the other documentation that I had with the truck from the previous owner showed that it came from Illinois. So that's that's pretty much explains why the why it's got so much rust on it. Any of you that's been around this channel for a while knows that I kind of geek out over those RPO codes. It's just kind of interesting to me to kind of picture in my head what this truck would have looked like or exactly the way it was whenever it was born back in 1979 a little bit of a view from the driver's side door panels pretty rough shape the whole truck's kind of in rough shape it's got a pretty pretty rough looking patina to it i kind of like it i've tossed around the idea of of redoing the interior making the interior really nice back to factory looking now these these door lock knobs are a custom made piece uh, a fella on Facebook makes a lot of these he makes shift knobs uh, all sorts of stuff uh, you can go check him out I'll put a link to his uh, Facebook page on the in the description box below so you can go check him out Bobby Lawson is his name uh, I don't remember the name of his little company but pretty cool stuff there all right we'll take a peek under the hood it does have a 350 uh, if I remember right, when I ran the numbers, it was out of a 77 three-quarter ton two-wheel drive pickup. Uh, I put a bigger cam in it, a comp cam's 270, and timing chain, push rods, valve springs. I've got a video on everything I've done to this engine. Uh, I've got it in the playlist. You can go check the playlist out for this truck. Got the original jack, jacking instructions, all that good stuff. It does have electric fans. My wiring is a mess. I know that's that's one of my one of my downfalls when I'm putting stuff together. I I'm, I'm really bad about just getting the wiring to where it works and then then leaving it, just kind of zip tying it up out of the way, and it usually ends up looking a little rough. I don't remember where what these fans are out of. I found them at a salvage yard. I'm wanting to say out of a Grand Prix. A V6 Grand Prix. It may have been a supercharged Grand Prix, but I, I can't remember for sure. I do believe it was a GM uh, product. It's run off a thermostatic switch there, so it, it they come on at like 200 or 210 and go off at 175 or 180. Don't remember the numbers on that, but they're individually run off uh, individual relays. Along with the camshaft, I've got a Elderbrock Performer RPM intake and just a little 600 CFM vacuum secondary Holly carburetor. Uh, kind of an interesting story about this intake manifold. I bought it back when I was 16 years old. I bought it used from a guy for like 60 bucks. Put it on the engine on my first truck, my old 73 I had back in high school. And since then, it's been on several different small blocks, and I've just kind of kept a hold of it throughout the years and still using it. 
Now for the future plans for Cream Puff, I would like to take the engine out of Buddy, the 468 big block, freshen it up, uh, put it in this truck with a little bit bigger cam in it. Uh, probably I've got a set of aluminum heads. I might put the aluminum heads on it too, but it'd probably be, you know, 450 horse uh, big block in this little truck. And I think it'd be pretty fun. Other things I'd like to do to them is put a limited slip differential in the rear of him. I do want to keep the 276 gears. Uh, I'm kind of a fan of the higher gears for a cruising truck. And that's about all he is. He gets me back and forth to work. Uh, they're high enough. If I get out on the highway, he's not just, you know, it's not winding him out real tight. He cruises around around 2,000 RPM at, at highway speed. So gets around pretty good. The last time I checked the fuel mileage, is probably around 16 miles to gallon, which isn't too bad. Other than that, just pretty much just kind of keep him running. Like I said earlier, I may eventually tear him down and rebuild him, fix the rust and stuff like that. But I want to try to preserve the originality of this truck because it kind of shows the story of this truck. I wish, I wish I knew more of the story of this truck of, you know, why it's got a big hole in the, the back of the, the cab, which that's not for the factory uh, cargo lamp that was something else it's got some holes on the roof that i've plugged also that i think they had some sort of a strobe light or something on it uh kind of makes me wonder if they didn't have this as a pilot truck or or something like that uh you know i'd like to have a talk to whoever put this barn paint on there because it's it's pretty tough i'll give it that but it sucks trying to get it off of there the top of the roof is pretty rough uh, i'm thinking about if nothing else just taking the roof down to bare metal uh, kind of patching it up cleaning it up and painting it repainting it white i know it didn't come original with the white top but i think it would look okay and it it wouldn't look as bad as trying to match this this santa fe tan if you have any questions or comments about this truck or anything else on this channel just hit me up in the comments below uh, also before i end this off i want to mention that i've got another youtube channel called regular stuff i just got a few videos right now over there i'm trying to get it going uh, and it's just mainly everything else i do that doesn't have anything to do with square bodies you know working on the farm cooking on my blackstone grill uh just i'm not real sure where that channel is going to go and that's the thing is it's not really going to have a direction it's going to be a little bit of everything else just kind of regular stuff hence the name so go check that out if you don't mind i'll put a link to it down in the description box below 